Mercy and peace may it be multiplied unto you. This is Apostle Elliot to some, Dr. Elliot to others. And I wanted to just take a brief moment of time to do a brief teaching on a term that we find in the Bible, as well as in our Western world culture. And the term that I'm referring to is free. What does free mean? Well, when we look at this term, according to our Western world culture, uh, we have like uh, three to four definitions for it. Uh, the first one that I bring to your attention is uh, to, for one, not to be under the control of uh, another power or someone else, or to be able to act the way that one wishes, to not be bound in one's actions. All right. Um, another definition that we associate with being free is to no longer be confined or imprisoned. And we can also look at that same definition in the context as being released from captivity or confinement or slavery or imprisonment. And then the last definition that we have associated with being free is in association with no cost or no payment being necessary. But when we began to look at this particular word, according to scripture, what I want to bring to your attention is there's about three different Hebrew words for free. And there is uh, two to maybe three significant Greek words for free. And let me briefly go through those with you so that you can see uh, the uses of these words, what these words are, and how they are applied and to be understood according to the scripture. So for instance, Old Testament, one of the first uses of the word free we find in Exodus chapter 21 verse 2. And the scripture says, if thou buy a Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. So notice the word free is being used there. Well, the Hebrew word that's used in this particular scripture is, is kofshai, kofshai, C-H-O-P-H-S-H-I-Y. And kofshai means to be exempt or not obligated to bondage or tax or care. Now, let me bag up, though, because I want to make sure that you have clear understanding, because most people usually associate bondage with being in incarceration. But in clarity, bondage, according to the scripture, is is really implying labor. So in this, koshi is one being exempt or not obligated to doing a labor or working after something in conjunction to also could be applied to tax or to care for something or someone. So in that, that's what, what's being implied. We look at Exodus 21, two, it says, once a slave has been freed, their freeing is the fact that they are no longer obligated to do a labor towards something or for someone or any other additional tax or care that has to be given to who they have been indentured to as a servant. So in conjunction with that, we can find other scriptures that use this same word, kofshi, which is in Exodus 21.5, uh, verses 26 and 27, and also in Deuteronomy 15.12, to name a few. Now, Another word that I bring to your attention regarding free is in Exodus chapter 21, verse 11. Different word is being used. The scripture says, and if he do not these three unto her, then shall she go out free without money. Now, this is not kofshi. This is shanam, C-H-I-N-N-A-M. And shanam means to be devoid of cost. For, for something basically to be free. There's nothing that has to be paid in return. There's no price that is associated. So this is the use of the term free here in Exodus 21, 11. And you'll also find the same word used in Numbers chapter 11, verse five. Now, the third one that I bring to your attention out of the Old Testament is in Numbers chapter five, verse 28. When you turn to Numbers 5, 28, it says, and if the woman be not defiled, 
but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. Now, this word that's used here is not koshi and it is not shanam, it is nakash, N-A-Q-A-S-H. And what's very profound or prolific about nakash is the fact that the word means to be purged or to be cleaned out and declared pure or undefiled or innocent or to be made empty of anything that uh, infects or, or defiles. So in this, basically, the scripture says, if the woman be not defiled or, or be violated, then she is clean or she is in a status that she is purged to the state that she is considered pure or innocent. Uh, um, this is the context of the term free. Now, in that, there's two significant New Testament terms I want to bring to your attention as well when it comes to free. When, when we turn to John chapter 8, verse 36, Scripture says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Now, this is a verse that many people quote all the time, but let us look at what is being implied by the term free. The Greek word that's used here in the first use of the verse is eleutero, E-L-E-U-T-H-E-R-O-O, -E -E -O, which means to deliver or to make exempt from sin, morals, ceremonial, or moral liabilities. So he says, if the son therefore shall make you free or make you exempt or not obligated to sin or unrighteous thinking or to make you obligated to any morals or any ceremonies or any mortal liabilities, then the verse says, therefore, shall, shall, uh, ye shall be free indeed. So the second use of the word free is still off the same root of eleutero, but it's eleuteros, which means to make unrestrained or unbound to any obligation. So if I've been made exempt what it says in the first part of free, then now it also uh, results in me being unrestrained or unbound to any obligation, which is the intent of what the son does for each and every one of us because most feel that they're obligated to the sin or the things that they do, even to the things that they are laboring after or in bondage to. You feel an obligation. So his spirit is meant to free you from any obligations or liabilities that may also impact uh, your ethical views that do not line up with what he's liberated you to. Now, uh, you can find this word eleutero or eleuteros also referenced in John 8.33 uh, in, throughout the book of Romans, throughout 1 Corinthians, and throughout the book of Galatians. Uh, so, in saying that, there's one other word that I bring to your attention as I stated here a few moments ago, and it's in Romans chapter 6, verse 7. And it says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, let me clarify. What it's implying is when it says he that is dead, it means he that has died unto himself, meaning his own or her own human nature, uh, her, hers or his own fleshly desires that goes against the character of the Lord God. So he or she that is dead to their own nature is freed from sin. Now, the Greek word that's used here is dikeo, which means to render or declare righteous or declare justified or declared as one who is observant of divine law. So in that, these are the terminologies associated with free according to scripture. And I pray they bless you and bring you into divine nature of the Lord God through Christ Jesus and Christ Jesus alone. 
Amen, amen, and amen.